Let's pray. Father God, I ask that you touch all of those who are shut inside their homes during this time of pandemic. Help them to have patience. Help them to have long-suffering, Lord God. Give them little gifts of joy and give them little gifts of change throughout the day. We ask with those who are sick that you would be with them. Uplift them with your Holy Spirit and be with the physicians as they help them. Be with our personal needs. In this moment of silence, we lift them up to you. Thank you, Lord God, for supplying all of our needs. Help us to be better at being your light, at being your hands, and at being your feet throughout the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boy, what a week we've had with our community being quarantined with the coronavirus. And we are hit with a strong earthquake and strong aftershocks. You know, people are scared. Some people are panicked. You know, the newspaper headlines are saying that this is the challenge of our generation. You know what? They didn't say what generation it's a challenge for. I think it's a challenge for all generations. But this virus attacks older people and those with weakened immune systems really, really hardly. And uh, they seem to have uh, skipped over the young teens, at least they think so. But more and more young adults are heading into the emergency room with, with the signs of the coronavirus. And nobody, nobody seems safe. In times like these, many fear that the end is coming. It, it can seem like darkness is, is all around us. Doom and gloom permeates even our shopping experiences when we go down aisles that are Nothing but empty shelves because of uh, doomsday preppers buying the entire place out. We are afraid of the unknown and the, the news gives us uh, some catastrophic and worst case scenarios that just come one after another to, to just give us a false sense of what the reality is outside our doors. And you know the earthquake just added to the panic. It's like we're in a, in a disaster movie, and, and we're all just hoping that we're not one of the victims. The fear of death is all around us. Unable to attend the funeral after his father died, the son lived far away, called his brother, and told his brother, do something nice for dad, and just send me the bill. So later, he got a bill for $200, which he paid, which was quite reasonable. The next month, though, he got another bill for $200. So he also paid that, but he figured it must have been some incurring expense. But bills kept coming for $200 every single month. And finally, the man called his brother again and asked what was going on. Well, his brother told him, you said, do something nice for dad. And so I rented him a tuxedo. Death was a major concern in the early Christian church with persecutions just beginning. And this morning's scripture was written in trying times, just like our own. It, it was a time of change, great change. The Christian persecutions were starting and there was trouble in Jerusalem, and uh, the Roman occupation was, was not going well with rebellion after rebellion. Darkness seemed to be falling all around them, and Paul assured them that they were above the evils that the others were doing to each other in this time of crisis. They are in Christ. So let's look at the scripture. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. In times of darkness, we're called to be light. 
uh, through simple acts of kindness, charity, giving someone else a break when they have a bad attitude. It's all part of being light in the midst of darkness. The one verse that I love best here is while doing this living and loving, we're also called to find what pleases God. It says, find out what pleases the Lord. What a fleeting thought, though. Some churches focus on rules, and they see these verses as a way of being holy, cookie-cutter behavior, in a pattern which you can't waver from, or you'll be ostracized. Uh, Holier-than-thou attitude, where you make yourself feel good by making others bad. But this simple verse here frees you from that. Finding out what pleases the Lord. It means bringing you closer to God. What brings you closer to God? What gives you spiritual depth of soul? It could be being outdoors. It could be music. It could be art. It could be enjoying that or doing it. It opens a door. To explore, finding out what pleases God in your heart. In these troubled times, be an agent of light to those around you. Help when they need to lift it up and help them feel empowered. Help others feel encouraged. Help others feel fulfilled as you navigate through life on the upward path. Being positive helping, encouraging, lifting others up, and hanging on during these tough, troubled times. Because these times, well, they're soon going to pass. But being a light in darkness will change you. And you know what? Being a light in darkness will make the time go a lot quicker. May it go quicker for you all. Amen. And now may the joy of the Holy Spirit, the patience of Christ, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with all of us this week. In Jesus' name. Amen.